Hello and welcome. You're with IndiaPostLive.com, India's first live conversation web television. This is a portal where all of you can log in anytime and talk to us, converse with us, even as our conversations are on live. You can send us your posts, your audio and video comments, and your tweets at the rate India Post Live and hashtag India Post Live. IndiaPostLive.com and other social media are avenues where all of you are creating content. But well, when it comes to traditional media, there are reporters, there are stories, and there are those stories for which reporters have to toil really hard to bring out certain facts to the fore. Today we are going to be discussing a particular story that two reporters have worked very hard on and which has not really been reported all that much. In fact, only today it has come as a lead story in one of the newspapers. Let's take a look at that story which explores and uncovers the nexus between Hawala and certain legit businesses. Let's take a look. Moin Qureshi, a Rampur-based meat exporter, was under constant scrutiny since December 2013 after the income tax department started tapping his phone conversations. In February 2014, during the robust election campaign, his house and offices were raided, leading to the recovery of 6 crore rupees and 20 lockers in the name of Qureshi's employees. The revelations have put many politicians, including Matang Singh and Naveen Jindal, and former CBI director Amar Pratap Singh in a tight spot as Qureshi allegedly had close connections with them. Unfolding the intricate story, Vishwas Kumar and Shantanu Guhari will unveil the diaries of covering the story. All right, so that is a new series that we are starting on India Post Live, inspired by where we talk about stories, talk about reporters who have worked hard to get us those stories and reporters who inspire us. I'm very happy that we have Vishwas Kumar and Shantanu Guharai in um, our studio. And these are the two journalists who have toiled very hard to bring out this story, um, which, you know, who talks about Moin Qureshi, who is a meat exporter, exporter who facilitates a strong nexus between corporates and politicians. It was a very brave thing to do. Vishwas and Shantanuda, thank you so much for being a part of this conversation. All right, let me first uh, tell our viewers that this story has uh, featured in uh, the latest uh, edition of India Legal um, and uh, let me just uh, just show that to you. Uh, these are uh, the stories that uh, they have done uh, inside Alibaba's cave. This story uh, is by Vishwas Kumar and also the entire exploring the entire Hawala issue of Hawala and Halal. This is the story that Shantanu Gohare has come out with. All right. Now that we have both of you, tell us the story. Tell us individually you you guys have worked on the yeah, story, right? right? Yeah. Okay. So how what really uh, how did the story come to you? See the story, I have covered CBI hmm. and I have also covered income tax hmm. and the, when the rate came, the, there was story was there hmm. and so I started talking to people and you know initially it was like, like one of the raid has happened since this was, he was a, happens to be doing old school president so hmm. there was a quite buzz hmm. so but uh, after talking to people it seems that the full story has not come okay uh, so i started digging more about him and uh, then you know one after another things led to the finding that key you know the it's the the stories which are coming is just a tip of the iceberg because the amount of wealth which he is, has accumulated hmm. and the stated income which he has declared from the meat export hmm. doesn't match at all. Mane. There is maybe like huge gap between them. Mane. Right. So the where did the money come? The main story, where did the money come? Mane? So I started like a simple mathematics. Mane. You know, he's declared income as agro export meat in you know, like 165 crore. Hmm. He's not even one of the biggest of the exporter which he claims. Man. Right. You know, he's like he comes on the medium, man, you know. Hmm. Hmm. So but even is the one property that farmhouse in Chhatarpur it is cost more than hundred crore the land man. Yes. And then I started finding out you know where what this uh, house and you know, I was just actually I was just searching for it man. People have told me, you know, okay, okay this house is Great, man. You know, but hmm. how, how does it look, man? How hmm. do a reporter go inside, man? You know? Yes. How you, did you go inside that no, house? No, I because huh. it was already you now it is another yes, huh. scrutiny of the income. I said no, it is no way, man. He will allow me to go inside, man. 
So other way, I was looking into information. Then I, uh, you know, uh, searched. There was a magazine. It is a Lee magazine. This is a, uh, one of the top magazine of the British magazine, huh. which uh, um, profiles the the big sorts uh, houses. Huh. In, in, basically, it's, it talks about interior designs. Huh. Right. So then I found this house has been profiled. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and they had given the whole pictures when it was like suit picture when right. and it has given the, all the details when every details when everything has been foreign imported when one furniture has cost thousand crores like of money when so basically you're saying that it's so you know it's, it's like brazen enough to yeah, launch the house brazen enough man. <laughs> then you know I thought ki, oh now I've got the evidence to show ki, you huh. know this is the guy when you know is it, till now the story was just ki, okay one of the Hawala dealers, man. Right. Yeah, uh, in before that, Hawala dealer, it was Hassan Ali Khan, man, hmm. who is much more bigger name, hmm. man. He was also some some billion, some and all people are writing about, man. But Shantanuda, uh, let me ask you, you know, uh, very surprisingly, like uh, Vishwas uh, said, you know, he came to know from his sources, he's covered CBI, hmm. that the CBI raids are happening. Yeah. But somehow, the story really didn't get reported much, right? See. Tell us about that, yeah. The problem in any Hawala operation is, hmm. Hawala is the illegal way of sending money out or bringing money in, hmm. which Indians have been doing for ages. Hmm. My trigger to the story was when I was investigating into the basic modus operandi on Hawala for a publishing firm, mm -hmm. and they were very keen if we could write a book on Hawala. Okay. So I was told that a peculiar raid has happened where tapes have come out, conversations, which could put the Neera Radia tapes to shame. And I was told mm. that the tapes had a lot of information, a mm. lot of ministers talking about money, sex, and all kind of stuff. Now, while I started digging up, I'm, I'm, I, I have an eye for detail. I try and go behind the scene and try and ask people mm. what exactly happened on the day of the raid, what happened right at the gate when the IT officers went in. Mm. It was not a CBI raid. It was an IT raid. Right. Income tax guys, when they raided, what happened? Mm. So a lot of small, small details started adding up. Now let us not forget, we are talking here of a very influential person, a person whose connections cut across all party, party lines, lines mm. and he's, he's very, very powerful. So obviously the story never came out. I think Indian Express did a two-part story, Ritu and, our, and his team, up with your Suresh, and all of them do. Mm. So I told Ramesh, I said, let's try and take a look at this story. It's going to be a big story. Mm. And what was very funny, I mean, very interestingly funny for me was, all Hawala operations and all Hawala operators eventually end up being going escort, completely escort free right. because investigations don't lead to their logical end. Hmm. And it brings me to this fact that even even match fixing, the Hansi Kronia case went to a logical end because Kronia confessed to the crime. But the same case in India, we have not been able to handle it because everyone is denying the crime. So. Moin Qureshi and his powerful connections, I'm not worried about the connections because in Delhi, which is a city high on power, high on cash, connections are natural and normal. I'm not worried about how great a house it is. It's sure, if you earn more money, <coughs> Mukesh Ambani has got a huge antilla in Bombay. So even Moin Qureshi got a French designer and was very impromptu dinner where his wife said, come and design the house. All of that has happened. This is all fine. But was he parking, was he keeping politicians' money? Right. That was the one point. Hmm. Number two, was he trying to utilize the CBI director's friendship with him? Because his daughter and the CBI director's daughter, hmm. where I was told, they have some common interest. And the root of this Hawala trade that traveled from Delhi, went to Dubai, went to Paris, went to London, and the first alert came from the London guys hmm. who alerted the Indian authorities hmm. that substantial amount of money has been wired. Hmm. And why is this happening? So eventually an interesting story fell into place. It was a Herculean task is for it, you. No, not exactly. I mean, I think, I think as I'm sure Mr. Biswas would say and agree, hmm. I think journalists' job is to dig out for information. Yes. Hmm. In most cases, newspapers prefer not to do these kind of investigations because it entails libel cases. People slap you with cases. You have to go to the courts and fight the cases. Hmm. Somewhere people are not very keen to chase this. If you notice, hmm. investigation, investigative journalism 
has almost come to a halt in this country. Yes. We rarely do it. And when people do it, they get into, get into serious trouble. Mm. So I, we had scooped Hassan Ali's case by India today a couple of years ago. Nothing has happened to the Hassan Ali case. He filed a lot of cases against us. I'm sure India today is fighting those cases. So I think uh, Moin Qureshi case, more needs to come out. Hopefully more will come out because now that a new government is in place. Unless, of course, Moin Qureshi has been able to manage the new government. Things, well, that, uh, of course, will come to light yeah. uh, by and by. We have a young student with us, an aspiring journalist called Shaurya Oberoi, who has some questions for the two of you. But before that, Shaurya, if you can just give me 30 seconds. Uh, you talked of the you know, libel issue, and we are taking these names so openly, you know, his daughter and, um, you know, I the think, daughter I think, of uh, the... I think you have to be very sure of what you are writing. Right. Hmm. Journalists, I'm sure Kumar also has documentary evidence to back up. <coughs> the FIR report has not been filed as yet. But the mm. fact that raids have happened, there is a documentary evidence of that. Mm. Yeah, of course. And the fact that he has text messages to Amar Pratap Singh, mm. the telecom company has evidences of that. Mm. So you know what you do? You start joining the dots. Mm. And then you wait for the next big dot to join. Now, the next big dot would be when the tapes will come out mm -hmm. or whether the tapes will come out or not. Nira Radia case became big yeah. because for the first time, India could hear what top people were talking, including journalists. Yes. They were talking. And as a result of which, the case blew really big. In so, fact, Narendra Modi had in one of his uh, election speeches... Not one, two of the speeches. Two of his speeches, speeches he, he said that it's yeah. going to be uh, the biggest hawala he case may, of them he all. He said that Moon is the biggest hawala. But ironically, hawala. don't forget, the moment Narendra Modi said that, yes. within a fortnight, one of his close friends, the Congress, I think, launched another campaign in showing that man, hmm. based out of Baroda or Ahmedabad, hmm. supposed to be a big hawala operator from Gujarat, close to Amit Shah and Narendra Modi. So I think this sling, much slinging continues hmm. as long as unless you have solid evidence backed by international investigations that logically or conclusively says Moin Qureshi was earning more than what he actually should have earned. Yeah. He was parking politicians' money abroad. So that needs to be proved. Right. But on a prima facie, it's a fascinating story. It's a because, fascinating story, yeah. yes. Yes, okay. Uh, Shaurya, <coughs> sorry about that. We've held you up a bit. But then, you know, you've obviously got a lot of things in perspective uh, from both the journalists. What is your question, Shaurya? Uh, my primary question here would be that uh, I understand that you have all uh, against Moin Kuri Oya. Given that, don't you still the safety knowing fully well the kind of connection this man has been in politics? How far does reach actually? This would be a very question given the fact that I'm trying to do it. Okay, uh, I think your audio, there's a bit of an audio problem, but what I understood is, uh, aren't you... So whether there's a fear factor. There's a fear factor, right. Let Vishwas say that, then I'll say. Yeah. The no, fear factor is there, always there. Mene. The biggest is fear factor is not physical more than the legal libel thing. Mm. You hire any lawyer mene, and he will file a criminal suit. Very easy. Mene. Mm. And this is, and the more than the reporter, the owner and the editor are more scared. Yeah. Mene, you know. <laughs> yes. So the press comes to the us as a reporter. Mm. Mene, of also. course. Mm. So the fact is ki, but the fact is ki, if you are there, mene, you stick your neck. Mene, and I've been uh, doing a story for a long time. Mene. My thing is ki, you have to be back every inch of what you say, man. Every fact, which every documentary names, evidence which I have written, mm. you know, is collected from public official documents, man. So that's the. It's, you have to be meticulous, man. Mm. So that ki, you have to be prepared. Ki, this you have to defend this matter in court, man. I see that ki, somehow I have to defend this matter on court, man. Mm. So I have to be better, be prepared, and don't leave any loopholes. Indeed, but but you know you have we have seen a lot of cases where despite there being so much of uh, mm -hmm. evidence See, cases mm -hmm. go cases, cold. Cases will always be there. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all, any person mm -hmm. has a legitimate right to go to court, mm -hmm. file a case. Of course, <laughs> and the onus is on me yes. to prove that I am innocent. Mm -hmm. And let me cite a few examples very quickly. In 2011 and 2012. Three of India's two biggest investigations came out of my laptop. One was the coal scam, which eventually became a much big story. Hmm. India Today, we, I did the story first. Followed by a story on GMR's scandals at the airport. 
the day India Today hit the stands, and it's very interesting because the cover was the rise of the navel and the dropping of the breast. So obviously a lot of people <laughs> bought the magazine. And how Indian heroines were now displaying their navel uh, more than anything else. Hmm. So obviously the magazine was a hot uh, hmm. selling uh, proposition. Hmm. The following day, GMR released advertisements in all mainline dailies denouncing the article. So that means they must have spent at least 20 to 30 lakhs in countering my article. And then they slapped me hmm. with a 500 crore criminal defamation suit. Right. Exactly five weeks later, uh, on a verge of being under tremendous pressure from within the organization, hmm. my sources in the CAG told me that the report has been submitted. Here is the abridged copy. Just give it to your lawyer. Hmm. If you know that there is a story and there is a genuine story, there's old jungle saying, where the, wherever there is a flaw, there is law. So finally at the court, they quietly withdrew the case without our lawyers knowing it. And as a result, the India Today lawyers, Luthra and Luthra, represented by one very beautiful girl called Mumtaz Bhalla, she came back and told me that, but there, there are no, no opposite side. Hmm. So they <laughs> said, why, what happened? He said, but they have said, ki, uh, we will talk about it with the editors and the reporters. Let's not fight a case and all. <laughs> okay. Do you genuinely believe if you are filing a 500 crore criminal defamation case against me, you will withdraw without notice? So, cases will always happen and of course now fear, what is the fear factor? The fear factor is when you are writing about underworld, there are chances that you could be bumped off. But you know the story of the bhai has gone on so much, it has come into Hindi movies, everybody is a bhai, everybody is a bhai ne bola, bhai ne bola, you know. One or two guys including a very dear friend of mine, J.A.T.A., he died. But Indian journalists are still very safe, we don't really encounter the kind of harrowing experiences where journalists in Pakistan have to encounter. Of course. In Afghanistan, in Latin America, they have to encounter. Hmm. So, a corporate house may sue you, but you'll have to handle that. Let's say Paranjay Guha Thakurta's book on that global gas wars. Yeah. Now, he has been slapped with a 2,000 crore legal notice. Hmm. Now, somewhere, yeah. I'll take it in, a, in a case like that, hmm. he will have to go hmm. and take on India's richest person in the court. Now, everybody knows this case is going to fall flat. But on the prima facie basis, hmm. he has to go to court. Of course. Hmm. He has to go and defend. So, Shaurya, basically what Shantanuda is trying to say is that, you know, you follow through. <laughs> you are, you have, you are convinced about a story. Yeah. You have the facts to follow it. You have the documents relating to what you're putting out there for the public to read. And you just have to have the guts to follow it through. Am I right? Absolutely. And also the only fear factor here for journalists is, hmm. is he being backed by the editor? Yes, is that's very important. backed by the publisher? That's very important. Much important, much more important. Yeah. than whether you were slapped with a legal suit or not. Hmm, that's if what the even editor doesn't back you, if the publisher yeah. doesn't back you, it's become very difficult, very vulnerable for the reporter yeah. to stand alone and fight. I wish we had uh, so, so Apu think, Suresh uh, yeah. to talk. You know, he is also, in fact, Indian yeah, Express so, so today. I think, I think that, is, that is very important, that's very vital. Uh, Indian Express today... Don't uh, forget in the 2G scam, <laughs> yeah. some of the biggest stories got dropped because the editors were heavily compromised. I'm saying it very openly. Don't forget that India doesn't get a Pulitzer Award because Indian journalists don't dig that much. So you need to dig back by the publishing house. Very few publishing houses actually go out and fight. Now, many people talk about corporatization of the media. Yeah. The biggest problem of corporatization of the media is this. Are you ready to raise a voice of dissent? Are you ready to dig? A Moin Quraishi story is a great story to chase. You have to send reporters to London, Dubai, Paris, and do a great investigation, do a three-part story and say, here is this guy. Hmm. Don't forget that some of the biggest scandals in cricket have come not from the ICC's anti-corruption unit, but has come from journalists of course. who have meticulously worked on the story. But you know, the last line of your article hmm. what did says... I write? I forgot. <laughs> anyway. You forgot? Yeah. No, it's, it doesn't sound very optimistic somehow. It says, over the years, the illegal hawala has morphed with white economy in such a manner yeah. that most deals are merely shades of grey. No, we agree. I mean, I'm not... I'm, okay. My question is something else. Hawala seems seamlessly attached to legal trades. So perhaps you are also not very sure that the the corrupt will, uh, you know, see justice will be served. 
I can't have a Ram Rajya. Even the Ram Rajya, what the Ramayana has said, was a very painful Rajya. But Ram had to let go his wife and the two sons. <laughs> so it was not a very happy Ram Rajya. So I'm not looking for a Ram Rajya in journalism. Huh. I'm not looking for a Ram Rajya in the legal courts. Hmm. I'm looking for proper investigations which reach to its logical conclusion. Hassan Ali, the case dragged so long, the investigating agency had left enough loopholes for him to take out all his money. So HSBC came back to say there is no money in the account. So one has to go back to the first investigation when the money was found in the account. So a journalist's job is to first write. But an investigator's job is to investigate. Hmm. Now Hassan Ali case has been investigated by the income tax department. The case has still not gone to CBI. What is worrisome here? Why is worrisome the worrisome factor is if I am doing hawala, and the CBI director is a friend of mine. Hmm. So I, I have an air of finality around me. I have a shield around me. I can always message him and say, four guys are tracking me, get them off my back. So he could tell somebody, get those guys off their back. So that's what he has done. And Vishwas, did you have that? Did you have that? Guys up behind you? Guys after no, you? No, not. Uh, see, I have done uh, before, I have done a lot of crime reporting also ha, ha. and court reporting in crime no, in this particular story see you have named matang singh you have named uh, yeah. matang singh anyway is a deep shit so, <laughs> so let matang singh come out. see the <laughs> calls of that come problem. see the calls do come many but mostly they see one thing is there many if you are see there is a reputation also many there is also have a reputation of course of course as the has reputation i have reputation so if no these journalists are not somebody who just you know do some kind of a you know, hatchet job you know so they just give a hatchet job in most of the cases is a hatchet job and that's why exactly. the editors are not very keen to fight their cases that's right man so if i i have i don't do it man i do believe that if this is a story and you know i don't play the tricks of you know hmm. putting pulling somebody names even in in this case man i can tell you very frankly the cbi director name is just uh, distraction man the money has not, I mean, this guy has not many made money out of this guy. I mean, he already had huge money before even director was there. Then even uh, CBI director was appointed. I mean, but CBI director, since he was heading the 2 gs probe, I mean, he took on a huge corporate alling, billingly because of the you know Supreme Court's order. I mean. Exactly, exactly. So you know the fact is he is being targeted because of that money. I mean. hmm. It is not that he, this guy Moin Kurishi is much much bigger than this director. Hmm. That's also you know? that's also a story. The ah, theory it, is because. Uh, AP Singh took on the corporates. Hmm. So the corporates have utilized the Moin Kurishi Moin case is to get back at AP Singh. So he, if you see the express story, and Apu is very close. In fact, hmm. he started, he couldn't come to he the started with me only. He was, okay. there, he was there with me. Huh. So the fact is, huh. you know, all the story, even the first story to last story, every story is only AP Singh. Hmm. AP Singh, AP Singh, AP Singh. But AP Singh is just a small fry. Minute. You know, it's almost, it's a, it's a very well said, we've <laughs> hit the nail on the head. Yeah. Let me take you back in the story that rattled Calcutta a couple of years ago in the Rizwanul murder case. Okay. Uh, the Rizwanul murder case is a story that journalists should investigate. That's a perfect story for a journalist to investigate. Journalists out there, are you listening? Shauri, yeah. are you listening? You know why? Because okay. huh. everybody has left the story midway. Mm -hmm. What is the story? A young IT professional falls in love with a daughter of a very rich person in Calcutta, they get married mm. and the guy dies in a very mysterious circumstances, body found railway next train. to a railway track. Yeah. There is a rumor in the city, and only rumor, that he was bumped off. Yeah. But he was told to jump in front of the train, so that the train blew him off. Then the mother came on the scene of the brother and of the son, and the brother also became an MLA and all of that happened. And the girl apparently came back and then she again got married. <clears throat> Today, an ideal sting camera operation you do on Rukbanur and, and uh, that woman whose son, uh, this guy, this one who died, it's a perfect story. Now, in this story, the name of Saurav Ganguly's brother cropped up. Now, that in what the way he's saying AP Singh was a distraction? A Saurav Ganguly's brother was also a distraction. What did Saurav Ganguly's brother do? He took the toadies, his yes, daughter was married to that boy, he took the toadies to the police commissioner. That's now it's thing. very, very common in the city, suppose you know the Durdarshan director general, hmm. and let's say my daughter goes to you to say 
the can you take me to the dg hmm. he will say okay come yeah, come but suppose you later realize that my daughter has gone to plant a bomb there so that you are not at fault hmm. but there were a lot of mischief mongers in kolkata who said how come saurav ganguly's brother was involved now that this is where the distraction was so and where was the uh, if this is the distraction if ap singh is the distraction yeah. then the main who? story is to find out huh. whose main, money was he keeping main, main story is the what the politician money he was very close money. to politician now uh, you have also said <coughs> in your stories that there are people who are in the present union cabinet yes 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 right no, 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 no. present no, no. union cabinet of the upa 2 government and also in the in the this one in india also india yeah. india yeah. also yes i read that story you can't name yeah, but he name. you will not name no. him okay he is okay. from okay. A, so do you see this going you talked of you know a story going to its logical conclusion do you see this going to a logical that's conclusion? not for a journalist to take the story to a logical conclusion hmm. Hmm. even apu or ritu sari cannot hmm. take the story to a logical conclusion hmm. they will only write right hmm. the income tax the government hmm. hopefully the cbi if it gets involved hmm. they will take the story to a logical conclusion and there is also one problem in hawala cases i mean you are chasing a ghost money because you know till the if, if you say that this money was here hmm. one second you know somebody click the button the money has hmm. gone to some another country some, man, to another country yes. so you're just changing the footprints and, man. yes and not only and, that and it's very it difficult global chase, in investigation chase chase man. hawala money yeah. because Uh-huh. it's an operation by word of mouth by, by belief word of mouth. Uh-huh. that you have told me okay shantanu guhare i need 2 lakhs in calcutta in exactly 2 hours hmm. i have given you the commitment i have said when you return the money to me you will have to pay me 2 lakh 10000 rupees that's your fee hmm. of course but in 2 1 or 10 minutes or 1 hour you have the money there so a common man today has gone into hawala so it's almost like saying which now i mean prime minister the former prime minister had said once if you reduce the registration fee of houses a lot of white money will come to the government the black money in houses only happens because yeah i buy a house for 40 lakhs i tell the government for oh, this cost is 20 lakhs mm-hmm. only mm-hmm. so 20 lakhs is immediately black for me right. it was the same money that uh, anirudh bahal's sting camera caught all those bankers doing it now i i later spoke to him and i felt it was very sad because the bankers today they do it openly because lot of people go to them and say we have cash can yeah. you route it for us mm. so the banker will say okay how much cash you have is it 20 lakhs so he say okay we'll open five accounts 5 5 lakh 4 lakhs each and we'll do something <laughs> you uh-huh. talked of the whole legit thing happening and that is where i say the legit semi legit or legit thing <laughs> now if you catch me the same way many ways ask anybody even journalists when they buy houses a portion of the money they take in black they take in cash yeah or they pay in cash hmm. now am I, am i talking of cleaning that entire system i really doubt whether india can ever clean up that system hmm. Hmm. but let's catch the big fish the small fish will learn the lesson okay shorya shorya is there anything else that you need to i think we've learned a lot uh, today from uh, the two gentlemen is there anything else you want to ask we are about to yeah, wrap up I, the sh- yeah yeah i had a very general question about journalism Right. So, given the fact that there is government, okay, uh, what what is what what can we see as the future? Are we going to have a sort? Of, are we still as we? Okay. What is the what is the future so, of journalism? Uh, Are you talking of where the, the social media is coming in? What I just said in the beginning of the show, where each and every person is a content creator now, or are you talking of such investigative stories? What are you talking about? Not only that, right? I want to say that the fact that there's a new government in place, that is the same sort of freedom that is given to journalists. Okay. Oh, uh, the past couple of years, going okay. to the next. Muzzling, so muzzling voices of dissent. I, you, do, and, do you genuinely believe government muzzle voices? I don't think government has other things to do. <laughs> These are editors who muzzle voices. They mess up the stories big time. Generally, government doesn't have that much of time, energy. In seventy-five emergency time, then they muzzle some journalists. Fair. After that, fair enough. I think journalists has got a free run. Where do you see muzzling of journalists? Where they say you can't write, write a headline like this? 
that is yeah. the job of the editors they do it and more than that in you know, this day because of the social media and you know yeah. i also run my own website and also write for me i don't care if i if my job is suck here i will work for my website man. i will do what i have to do about it man. so today it is very difficult man. who try to you talked of social media and we have seen a lot of facebook posts uh, facebook where posts, people uh, have gotten arrested they have yeah. you know cases uh, filed against them no, that's a that's separate, separate issue thing. altogether but that, that you know where where the post against narendra modi where people yeah. have got arrested yeah. Yeah. that's But where uh, even I mean, a layman is, is that, becoming is a content that, creator. Is that, is that, not a journalist uh, who is posting. Yeah, you know, no, journalist no, has not got caught. But has a posting, journalist you know. got yeah. muzzled before writing a legitimate story? So you're saying the editor muzzles the voices. So the editors editor, are under pressure from yeah. the government, perhaps. <laughs> editors really are under pressure from the government. The editors are under pressure from the corporate institutions. Hmm. So the fear of the corporatization of the media is this. But what is the alternative? The BBC model that is floundering. You can't have a public service uh, trust where people put in money and then you run a newspaper. It has to be run like the Jains do. They see newspaper as a legitimate business. Hmm. And whatever they do, they are very clear about it. They say these headlines you can pay for. So that's why they have this trust, a treaty. Which is very fine. In page three, if you have a yeah. party and you want those pictures to come, you will have to pay a price for it. Right. So that's fine. Even Times of India does some great investigations. After we reported the coal scam, Sanjay Datta got the entire coal scam, the entire CIG report out on his website. So nobody could argue against him. So that's what I'm saying. I don't think journalists are actually under pressure from the mm-hmm. government. They are under pressure from editors who are a little wary to take on these kind of big investigations. as long as the editors are fine with investigations i think journalism has a future yeah. so talking so okay that's a very positive uh, thing uh, shorya that journalism the, there is uh, no threat to journalism per se provided you're willing to follow through with your story and provided yeah, yeah. you have the facts that you're not doing a hatchet job hatchet, quote yeah. unquote that, and let's not Vishwas forget Kumar. the libel laws <laughs> are much stronger abroad yeah very than, strong. very strong abroad than in india india journalists get Lot of leeway they go for writing things. They go scot free. Yeah. Internationally, if they catch you in saying something which you don't have evidence right. within a month, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Right. So, so let's let's not forget that. All right, Shorya, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, the conversation, of course, continues on IndiaPostLive.com through your audio and video posts, your comments, and your tweets. Hashtag IndiaPostLive and at the rate IndiaPostLive. Uh, one final question uh, from me before we wrap up. Both of you are, of course, going to continue investigating the story and uh, report on the various uh, things being done. to bring it to the logical end as i mean i think i think i have left it where where i had done i have shifted huh. to some other story of course, i'm looking but... at the story of amway now okay. where where the ceo has been arrested and a, again a big can of worms is opening up in the amway rackets in india we we'll look forward to like that which was almost like the sahara story so no, i have I, moved I, on i i have i have been still chasing this story mm. and i just hope and you know the, i get and because but today's in the next press it seems that yeah. you know the reportage is finally happening right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah because, because only one paper is doing once you have blown up the whole thing man yeah. the fact is we have blown up the whole thing so the whole now the people can see where, what how the wealth was man right. till right. now everybody is like he's a mysterious now, guy man. now it is something that you know have got the public man right. it is in the public man who is this guy and how his lifestyle <laughs> and everything so there. much money so <laughs> much of money and it is <laughs> like no, 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 i mean having money <laughs> once again i say is there anything wrong i mean let's let's not look just because uh, there is a man who is rich he shouldn't be i mean he hasn't to be a corrupt i mean no, there's no witch hunt no, no there's no witch hunt yeah. but no, with the a, money is like no i'm talking about the money the declared wealth and the yeah. lifestyle yeah. Yeah. whether those both, both right. things are matching or not matching i think that's simple. the point i mean yeah. that is the simple point that is the job of so the much. it it guys thank you so much thank and you. of course we hope uh, the it and the cbi and everybody else uh, will uh, take cognizance of the manner in which you have reported the story so painstakingly and so laboriously i would like to thank both of you for coming to the studio Pleasure. and sharing uh, you know the angst of uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, stories that uh, journalists do thank you so much the conversation continues on indiapostlife.com